with that let's move ahead with our next topic for track one that is stadium experience assurance which would be presented by vinod and santhal vinod is a senior industry veteran with more than two decades of experience he is a certified agile practitioner and also holds certificate in project management currently he is working as director in cognizant let's move to our co speaker santhal kumar Santhal has around 14 years of experience while working in various capacities of an automation lead, architect and manager. His interest is in exploring the tech arena in automation world. He is currently associated with Cognizant since last 14 and a half years. Here I see that Vinod and Santhal are going to tour us around a very beautiful stadium, but again with quality. And I'm really excited to know that what quality assurance are they going to unveil? So what are you Vinod and Santhal and welcome to ATA GTR 2021. Thank you. Thank you Jodi. Am I audible and are you able to see my screen? Yes, you're audible and I'm able to see your screen. All right, thank you. Yep. I'll get started. Good evening everyone. Uh, paper title is Stadium Experience Assurance. I'll uh, I'll I'll start with uh, uh, some context, right? So uh, today, technology is certainly reshaping customer experience. Um, advent of technology such as internet, web technologies, mobile, etc., have shaped customer experience over the uh, the last decade. Uh, and and the next wave of experience is enabled with uh, intelligence, with virtual experience, um, edge, zero latency, and always uh, always wear experience. The intelligence is powered by AI ML. Um, the virtual is provided by AR VR technologies, edge and zero latency, powered by uh, cloud 5G, etc. Uh, while the while the current decade or the last decade that we went through is, is about connected experiences, uh, the next decade is going to be about augmented and virtual experiences. And uh, uh, you can see industry analysts, leading industry analysts such as uh, Gartner, Everest, they are all pretty upbeat about how these digital technologies are going to reshape customer experience over the uh, next decade, uh, decade, and these are going to lead to more uh, augmented, more uh, uh, virtual and more really smarter uh, experiences. That is how the next decade is expected to be. And this phenomenon is expected to be uh, cutting across uh, industries, right from, uh, right from our homes, uh, smart homes. Homes are becoming much more uh, smarter. You may have noticed in the last five plus years across the geo, uh, homes are becoming much more uh, smarter, right? Appliances are becoming smarter within the home. Uh, the light is starting from lighting to uh, heating systems to uh, all of these are providing us a richer comfort, providing remote monitoring capabilities, etc. Like I said, across hospitals, uh, factories, smart meters, etc. Industries are becoming much more shorter, uh, smarter. And uh, for, for today's uh, uh, today's uh, paper, what you have chosen is a smart stadium, right? We picked one of these use cases, which is a smart stadium, and we will talk about uh, what does it mean by a smart stadium experience? What does the challenges in testing for a smart stadium, uh, which, is, which is going to be highly powered by augmented and virtual experience? And uh, what are the challenges? Uh, can we automate such an experience? Uh, in, while we have traditionally talked about web and mobile automation, uh, augmented and virtual experience is a really a, a, a very different dimension. What are the challenges involved in automating it? And how have we, how have we solved uh, some of those problems? We'll, talk, uh, we'll, we'll spend uh, second half of it really going through uh, the details of, uh, of the automation aspect of it, while the first half I'll cover uh, more around the, uh, what a smart stadium experience means and how do we uh, really uh, test for it. Let's kind of start with quickly uh, with with uh, uh, what are the technologies that are going to power a smart uh, stadium and uh, what are those uh, uh, leading what are those leading ones right a quick glance at what are those technologies uh, for, right um, before even I go into technologies today what are what are uh, the sports clubs or what are the stadiums expecting what are they trying to target from providing experiences right they are actually trying to target ultra connected experience highly engaged content for the fans this is what they are trying to target uh, today and this is their utmost priority and to provide this ultra connected to provide this uh, uh, huge content and to provide this always connected and virtual reality experience the technologies behind that are really uh, 5g which provides like a high uh, low latency connectivity, high speed connectivity, um, IoT for some smart uh, parking, smart navigation kind of use cases, 5G power 
covering all of this robotics and drones providing uh, uh, pro providing uh, real time tracking of uh, every event uh, um, in the match and providing uh, uh, providing across multiple uh, dimensions and perspectives right and all of this is finally delivered in the form of an ar vr or mr experience to the uh, to uh, the fan right and uh, if you look at what the industry uh, industry is projecting compared to today uh, the investments in smart stadium is expected to triple over the next uh, uh, over the next uh, decade this uh, this slide in this slide i have kind of listed the the top use cases that are going to make the stadium experience uh, more smarter right and uh, it starts with fan experience but it does not end at fan experience it goes beyond fan experience to also brand value add to also uh, team player feedback amplification to also more smarter stadium experience thereby also enabling uh, a more efficient and a cost optimized stadium operations as well let me dwell a little deeper into the fan experience which kind of is the predominant uh, use case uh, right uh, um uh, what what do we mean by fan experience how can a fan experience be amplified what are those top use cases right uh, from a fan experience type experience is improved both from an in stadium as well as an outside stadium experience right within the stadium the viewing experience is enhanced by providing a, a watching experience from various angles and seats let's say i am a, a fan sitting in a stadium in a particular uh, seat in a particular corner uh, I, I can only view uh, the experience from that where uh, traditionally i can only view the experience from that whereas uh, through this uh, augmented virtual reality experience i can view the same experience as if i was sitting in any different part of the stadium much more closer uh, much more closer to the player and from multiple different angles right that is the engage, that is the uh, that is the rich uh, next level of experience that we are talking about for a fan uh, for a fan and next is uh, this engagement is also uh, amplified by more more player perspectives uh, uh, one more use case is if a fan missed to watch a particular event right uh, uh, today there's only one way to stream it back to him is through uh, a one way streaming a one dimensional tv kind of a, a replay whereas uh, uh, in this augmented reality virtual experience if a player anywhere sitting in a stadium missed something he can actually go back and uh, himself the control within him uh, through an augmented reality virtual experience he can replay uh, replay that event replay the shot and then watch right so uh, like i said one is providing the experience from multiple uh, different angles a uh, second is providing player perspectives etc right uh, immersive experiences within the stadium player perspective 360 degree replays um, advanced game analytics today if i am watching uh, watching it over a stadium within a stadium or within a uh, at home uh, through a tv i can probably see some game uh, some game analytics whereas in an ar vr uh, you can have the game analytics as if it is interactive with the user uh, as well and i am not talking some things very futuristic these are some use cases that are already uh, being developed uh, being developed and getting uh, exponential right so those are those are a few uh, use case around how ar vr is making the experience uh, much more smart much more smarter right and from a fan experience we we move into brand value add uh, personalized targeted advertising um, a team player feedback amplification through stat, through through advanced ai ml stats through ar vr mr training sessions for the players like i said enhanced stadium operations on the day of a, uh, of an event this the uh, on the day of the event uh, uh, it is pretty crowded you have millions of fans uh, that are turning into across uh, uh, turning into the stadiums and and kind of crowd management for all of them is a nightmare and that is where some of these iot some of these uh, uh, some of these uh, ar uh, sorry not they are some of these iot smart cameras and all of those play an important role in 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 crowd management in in advanced access control thereby making the stadium operations much more efficient and smarter um, there, are, there are also some more use cases around uh, outside the stadium. When a fan moves outside the stadium, how can um, how can there be constant engagement with the fan? Uh, th there are some more use cases around it. In the interest of maybe I'll kind of uh, uh, skim quickly over those. Right. And uh, uh, all of those use cases that I spoke over the next few slides, I'll show real examples uh, of uh, implementation. Right. Today, here is an example where before you purchase a seat uh, through VR, you can actually see uh, for the seat that you have chosen how the how the experience uh, is going to look like, viewing angle, how the viewing experience is going to look like. So you can choose different seats, and then whichever seat you like, the viewing experience you can actually select that seat. Right. Uh, today, uh, recent Tokyo Olympics was provided with the 3D uh, 3 VR kind. of an experience already uh, some more uh, some more racing car racing 
uh, I'm just showing a snapshot of many use cases that have already been uh, implemented. What you can see on the top shows uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, immersive AR VR experiences within the stadium, advanced game analytics, more 360 uh, instant replays, in-app ordering that is uh, uh, before a fan orders something, you can actually see how uh, uh, that particular merchandise will look uh, will look on him, right? So many many such AR VR uh, augmented and virtual reality use cases are shaping uh, shaping the uh, in and off stadium experiences, it's right? Like, uh, more, more and more, more examples, examples that probably skip those in the interest of time. I'm hearing some input experience. Yeah. Uh, a quick snapshot of how the day in the life of a fan looks like during an event or a match. How a day in the life of a fan during during, during starting from him booking the ticket to uh, 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 reaching the venue, getting uh, uh, guidance uh, from a parking spot, smart parking, getting a navigation to the uh, seat uh, uh, through the uh, through the event, through the match, him being able to watch, uh, get better enhanced experiences, uh, uh, real time viewing as well as this augmented and virtual re uh, virtual events, giving him uh, more 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 uh, next level kind of a watching experience. And uh, after he comes out. Uh, it, uh, constant engagement with him in uh, stadium shopping merchandise experience etc right these are the these are the ways how technology is now shaping up his uh, uh, within in a day uh, of, of of a match how this whole uh, experience is getting uh, better i kind of listed the technologies what you see in red kind of shows especially the ar vr which kind of is the is the predominant technology uh, right while there is a, a mobile app while there is iot while there is analytics and ar vr ar vr is a place up in how finally most of these use cases are delivered and make the experience uh, for the fan uh, one level up. Um, uh, so, so I, we we spoke about we spoke about uh, uh, so far. I spoke about uh, what stadium experience mean. Let me move into how do we test? How do we test for those? What are the layers that we need to test? Right. The big bet is the big bet. The big area to test is on AR, VR, MR assurance. Um, there's there's also going to be personalized targeted advertising. So personalization testing, ad validation testing. All of the uh, is another area. The third area is all of this is rendered. Uh, all this experience is is the backbone behind all of this is the 5G network. Uh, right so testing for the 5g network testing for the sdns nfes behind those is another third area to be tested the fourth area uh, to be tested is uh, again uh, again all of these experiences uh, to make it richer there's also social media integration the fan uh, when he is watching the stadium he has constant social media uh, in, uh, interaction so those uh, is the third area to be uh, uh, tested a fourth um, uh, is um, uh, this AR, VR, MR experience is, is all uh, delivered uh, through a lot of video, audio, uh, uh, video, audio is delivered to him. So video, audio, uh, quality testing is an important aspect. Uh, next is uh, are testing all of these use cases through non-functional. Uh, there is a, some of these are some of these experiences are delivered through the mobile app or through a headgear. So testing for both a mobile app for an augmentation, similarly headgear for a uh, for a for a virtual experience testing for iot's etc these are all the different dimensions in which the testing assurance layers in which assurance needs to happen uh, i'll kind of summarize that in one slide uh, in, in one slide to say what are the different uh, different areas in which testing needs to happen and within each of those what are the uh, what are the next level of active uh, next level of focus areas uh, from a testing standpoint maybe i'll uh, like i said uh, uh, third party app integration ad validation uh, uh, um, 5G network. Some of these are already uh, are already existing uh, existing areas where testing happens, and AR VR is an area where there is not a lot of testing happening. So I'll probably dwell deep into that as a specific area. So in this whole stadium experience, like I said, 5G is one backbone, and on top of it, the experience is delivered to the customer in the form of uh, or the fan in the form of a, a virtual augmented experience, right? So what does it what does it testing for a uh, for that virtual augmented? What is that whole reality uh, testing? How is it different? Why is it different, right? Um, uh, uh, compared to a traditional. Uh, mobile or web application, the human and uh, where a human and application are interacting here, there is a uh, is a triangulated scope where you have not only human application, the hardware also plays a very very deeper uh, role in it. So hence, this triangulated scope brings a little more a little more uh, nuances into the testing of it. Number one, number two, uh, in a mobile or a web, you can control the paths that a, that a particular individual may take, and you can predict the behavior. Whereas uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 parameters, uh, multitude of parameters that influence the behavior. 
in a in a uh, uh, augmented or reality experience and it's important for us to understand all those parameters and then test and at the end of the day here you're not testing for fun i mean you're not just testing for functionality the whole experience delivered itself is a functionality and it is a very subjective term and like i said there are innumerable permutations combinations of paths and behaviors that an individual can take right so and hence uh, uh, the, the, the while mobile uh, uh, web made the testing a little one notch up uh, this makes it much much more complex because you have now something that is uh, some of these uh, uh, expectations to be uh, like like an experience to be a little subject to as well as the challenges of that you cannot predict customer behavior you cannot control the customer behavior so all of this what are the different there are nine dimensions in which the uh, in which the testing uh, needs to happen what are those nine dimensions i'll touch on the important areas number one when an augmented virtual experience is provided to the fan they have an ability to interact with it right not only view it in a one way but also interact with it it can be through a console it can be through voice command so uh, testing of how that system interaction happens is something that needs to be tested a second uh, when this experience is given uh, uh, you, on top of the real world you have 2d 3d objects being uh, being rendered uh, how those 2d 3d objects are rendered how, how are the dimensions of it and how is the real time tracking as as when as we keep interacting with it, how is the real time tracking is the second dimension to be tested third dimension is uh, 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 unlike uh, un uh, uh you, this is not going to be a static experience the user is going to constantly move and when he moves how does the how does the location uh, uh, movement across locations uh, that uh, uh, the, the coordinates continuously keep changing and there and the rendering experience needs to change according to the user's movement and hence how do you how do you test for that is another third different dimension third fourth is a virtual world assurance right uh, while the while the experience is completely virtual how do you make sure that the, the laws of physics are not deviated fourth fifth is uh, uh, while uh, something like a mobile uh, brought uh, or uh, brought uh, at complexity in 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 compatibility uh, now uh, now 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 this uh, ar vr brings that compatibility into another whole different dimension so testing for the compatibility uh, testing for these multitude of hardware testing for uh, testing for this experience across varied network speed 2g 3g we are talking about uh, constant video being delivered con uh, delivered in uh, cg we are talking about cga being delivered right so how do we test for all of those testing for performance of those a lot of it is going to be delivered over the cloud so test testing for the cloud um, uh, for the experience delivered through the cloud how how it dynamically scales is something that we need to the scalability needs to be tested uh, last but not the least the latency right testing of the uh, cgi frame rate all of those uh, under different stress conditions needs to be tested and this is something uh, that uh, that that uh, uh, does not exist this complexity does not exist in any other testing that we that we do uh, today so these are all the nine dimensions and 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 the area the focus areas from really testing and and, uh, uh, and reality assurance and if you look at it uh, this probably is a triple uh, at least a triple the complexity than any other, anything that we have tested today we also need to test for iot uh, it starts from start from data collection to storage to data aggregation to analytics to finally it, the stats being delivered to the end user uh, in the interest of time maybe i'll skip that uh, right and 5g is the backbone behind all of the stadium experience so testing uh, for the 5g across nr uh, different layers like nr or mec or core network all of those uh, needs to needs to happen um, and other uh, more some more valid areas are video audio quality engineering how is the bit rate how is the resolution how how are the distortions when the experience is being delivered to the uh, experience is del delivered if there are ad integrations is the ads integrating accurately all of those need to be delivered may interest time uh, I'll, I'll probably skip those we'll, like i said we'll focus more on uh, ar vr aspect of it so far i spoke about the complexity from a uh, uh, ar vr more from a uh, 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 a functional assurance standpoint. Like I said there are three dimensions of complexity that I come in, uh, and the automation kind of goes uh, really to the, the complexity and automation really goes to the next level. And let me talk about why I why I really mean why I really say that automation of AR VR is really difficult, right? In case of AR application, the the, the camera or the visual uh, input needs to be simulated, right, or manipulated. In the case of VR application, the user movements, motion in all, all all kind of needs to be simulated. In both the cases, we today do not have a process. 
solution to simulate either a camera or an accelerometer or gyroscope values, right? Today, there isn't a way to simulate an AR, to simulate a VR kind of a, uh, of, of a camera input or the constant motion. So that is one big dimension of a challenge. Second, all second dimension of the challenge is all traditional automation today relies on uh, identifying web applications, native applications or a location of an object, right? Whereas in AR, VR, uh, the challenge is because uh, uh, there, there's no concept of a web or native application. You're just uh, you're just really working with rendered images, rendered video for validation. And even identifying something using a location is very difficult because you're talking about uh, uh, this experience with a, a user constantly moving, right? So uh, so this brings this brings the whole. Uh, uh, challenge with automation today. Uh, is there anything closer? There are a few tools that you listed here, but none of them uh, come any closer to providing uh, 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 any uh, an automation, automation solution. We've kind of uh, put a solution and uh, um, we've kind of have a solution that is a working solution. And that is what we're going to present to the through the remaining half of this presentation. Central overview. Thanks. Vinod. I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes. Uh, I think we had covered uh, pretty much uh, on the different uh, uh, use cases and uh, also on the different uh, assurance standpoint. What are the different ways to that we tested? So uh, in the next uh, part of the session, I am I'm going to cover how the these automation and uh, uh, how the solution is what is that we have built. So uh, let's we can move on to the solution that uh, we have to offer and the ways by which uh, we overcame uh, these challenges. We have two approaches to automate AR and VR applications. The primary challenge in AR automation is simulating the real world, such as a living room in the camera of the mobile, having an AR application. We have resolved this by using a display device as a visual simulator which is kept in the line of sight with the camera. The tripod one that you are seeing in the screen has the mobile with AR application installed and tripod two has a visual simulator placed in line of sight, presenting the real world environment to the application. This simulates the real world necessary for the AR application. Thereby, we are able to mimic any real world environment in a lab like setup. So the output from the AR application would be sent to the verification libraries for further processing. Uh, in case of uh, VR automation, the primary challenge was is the simulating the user's movement. Yeah? So we have resolved these by leveraging a hardware unit that can be programmatically controlled over a three axis movement. I'll, I'll little bit dwell upon the three axis movement in the upcoming slides. The user movement is simulated by the unit, which helps to alter the reading in the accelerometer and the gyroscope values. The third and the largest is a result verification on rendered output. This involves two components. One is integration with the computer vision libraries. There are many options out there and we can choose one which best fits the use case because all these are AML based libraries and one works better than the other in a specific business scenario. For our solution that we have offered, we had taken an Amazon recognition. That could be a practical scenarios where AML based libraries wouldn't have as insufficient training in certain cases based on the different application under test and the results may not be accurate. Yeah, so in that case, we depend on the image comparison libraries in the solution. Let's move on to the next slide. This slide presents a logical view of how AR VR automation solution integrates with the core test automation framework. Apart from how we enable into extending the AR VR automation to recap. The AR VR automation extension consists of visual simulator controller. Device motion controller image comparison libraries, image verification libraries and AML computer vision integration to dynamically recognize and validate the AR VR generated objects along with the real world objects. Let me go to the next slide. In our car, in our case, we are leveraging gimbal, as I said, for simulating the three axis movement. The reason for selecting this gimbal is twofold. One being its cost effectiveness and second is the gimbal comes with an APA and SDK that allows us to programmatically control it. With the, with the use of device motion controller, 
and our solution we are able to tilt pitch or pan the device on with the air application which is installed on and validate the movement and placement of vr object in vr environment with respect to the input movements towards the right of the slide what we can see is an vr car a car, a car showroom application in which we have processed the in rendered image before and after user movement using vision libraries and identified the objects and positions this information is used to verify that the virtual world world has been rendered correctly in accordance with the user movement as you can see the user turned right and the expectation is that the car moves accordingly left and appropriately 27 percentage in the interest of time let, let us quickly go and see a recorded video So just a reminder, we have five more minutes left. As you can see, you can we have created a simple framework with an, as I explained before, with the key components for the use case. As you can see, the automation script has launched the mobile application. Here in this case, we have taken an Curry's PC point in place and we are selecting the a TV. As you can see, we are selecting a TV. The TV has been placed on my living space and final augmented image, which includes virtual and real objects is processed by the core engine. The result is as shown here. The result mentions that we have the real world object chair with a confidence percentage. Also, we have a virtual object identified more or television with a confidence percentage of 95.67 percentage with this we are able to conclude that the virtual object is successfully placed in a real world environment let's go back to this so in this image what we can see is apart from the visual objects we are able to also do the object detection and also there are some text detection in in which case in the left part of it is a couch which is placed wherein there are different uh, height height width and all the locations have been identified apart from which we will also be able to uh, see and detect the text within that with the price that we can see there uh, that is uh, also the text detection is also being validated in this case let's move on to the next slide In addition to the vision vision libraries integration, we have image comparison libraries which can be used to validate different use cases. Validating the placement of a couch or living room. As you can see, the difference between the original and the augment image is detected as 13.26 percentage. And we may verify this with a threshold of 13 to 14 percentage. Also, we can verify the perspective for a split screen display using image comparison here also we can use a threshold values to verify the difference the view with the closer object will result in a high difference and far objects will have a minimal difference to conclude these are the benefits that we have to offer so the in-depth net analysis based on the low focal length and dual camera if used in AR library. These are the uh, challenges and the benefits that we have to offer. And in terms of the benefits, we had 30% rate reduction in the testing effort and also 50% reduction in the regression cycle time. Also, we are able to enable the shift left and early automation and increase the release velocity through the uh, DevOps implementation as well. Apart from which we are able to optimize the cost and increase the ROI and reduce the overall human errors involved in validating all the uh, application for the ARVR automation. Yeah. 
thank you for for the opportunity to quickly summarize that uh, um, I, i hope you found this uh, useful and interesting uh, today uh, ar ar are there only from a gaming standpoint and across industries it is expanding uh, over the next 5 years we will see a lot of a lot of experience becoming smart and ar we are being a fun, uh, uh, ar we are being a medium to deliver some of those uh, are a good amount of those smart experiences the, i spoke about challenges uh, come uh, for in in testing in ar we are from a from a from a manual testing itself uh, um, in three dimensions and uh, we uh, and today no automation solution exists and we believe this is a very breakthrough solution of how uh, how to automate uh, uh, ar we are bringing in the uh, image recognition in bringing in ai ml and uh, uh, some more solutions around how we uh, how we simulate the motion around how we simulate the video camera right uh, today no such solution exists i hope you found this useful and interesting thank you for the opportunity um, Vinod and Santil, this is perhaps the most innovative uh, presentation of the day. This is what I can definitely assure. A very new topic, focusing on something AR, VR, and something what future can offer to us. So thank you very much for bringing this up. I may open uh, this forum uh, for audience. If they have any questions, and they can ask. okay i have a uh, few questions so uh while i was going through some code which was being uh, d- uh displayed by santel so santel what kind of tech stack are you going to recommend uh, for ar and vr applications yeah so i hope i'm audible right yes okay so uh, it, it depends on uh, say for example uh, the augmented reality app as we mm-hmm. say right uh, so typically we know that uh, the mobile app comes with either a native app or a web app or a combination of a hybrid app so on top of it you are going to have an extended enable feature with augment augmented images right so mm-hmm. uh, at times if we have a feature wherein uh, we are going to enable the augmented reality app we may have to extend our existing automation framework and then to enable the augmented reality It, the use case that we showed was initially a mobile automation framework and also a web which we had enhanced to an augmented reality app yeah mm-hmm. so uh, primarily when we go in for an aml based there are python or java java so these are the tech tool stack i can i could offer in some mm-hmm. cases the cloud providers wherein as we spoke about the aws recognition or you have the gcp so these are the different aml libraries that will have to offer it depends on the case to case okay hope i have answered it right yes i guess we have one more question anyone fine then i do have multiple questions and i guess this is an extensive topic uh, which cannot be completed in half an hour of session it would be f- not uh, fair that we are expecting a complete entire overview to be assimilated in such small frame of time so thank you vinod and santil once again for bringing up such an innovative topic on board it was really an interesting topic thank you thank you very much